Hi, my name is Alex with Day Tech Tech Tutorials and today we're going to be taking a deeper look at the pie chart and custom charts for Jira. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions about anything that I cover in this video, please let me know in the comment section below. Now this is a sponsored video, so thank you very much to Old Street Solutions for sponsoring the video. Let's jump into Jira and let's take a look at how to get the most value out of your pie charts. All right, so here we are in Jira. I am in my executive dashboard. I have essentially entered edit mode, and all I've done to this point is I've expanded my custom chart gadget here. So I made it, I maximized it, and then all I did was click the ellipses and hit configure so that I am in this view where I'm going to be able to alter the configurations of the pie chart. Now we are going to be doing future videos where we're going to cover the different chart types, but today's video is focused on just the pie chart. Once you selected the pie chart, the first thing you're going to want to do is select your source. You can pick the simple search gadget like I do, because in the previous video, I've already selected and configured my simple search gadget. But if you don't want to do that and you want to go, I uh, guess just the regular way of doing it, which is usually go pull a project, or if you have an existing filter, you can go reference that filter. Or if you're a little bit more on the wild side, you can make your own filter on the spot. So I'm going to stick with the simple search gadget. You can see it's connected here. And then the next part is to select your chart by. Now, this is where you have a lot of options. Basically, almost any field that you have in Jira, you can use it to chart that information. This is where you want to make the right call because you don't just want to create vanity metrics here. You don't want to be measuring things for the sake of measuring things. Whatever you display here in your pie chart should be something that you want to highlight from deep within Jira, surface it so that you can then drive business values based on that insight you're gaining through this dashboard. So make sure you're just picking the right field that makes the most sense for you and your team. The next item is the calculate. So this is essentially going to allow you to do the count or you can do the sum or you can do the average and then you get to pick a numerical field. You have some count fields, which is like issues and projects, or you have some common fields, which are other numerical fields already in Jira. Or if you have a custom field that is of the numeric type, it'll also show up here. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna leave the defaults. The chart title, you're gonna to wanna to give it a name that makes sense. So this is going to be all issues by status. Now you'll notice that this gives me the name here and then I have issues by status up here. There are two different titles. This is for the chart, this is for the gadget. So you may wanna rename it. There's an option for you to rename on the right-hand side to essentially be the same. It's up to you to kind of determine what you wanna name there. Once you have basically the top section configured, we wanna go into the bottom section and configure that section. So we're gonna start off with the heading label. So this is going to essentially tell us what the headings are for, right? And so. Uh, these are going to just be statuses in Jira, right? They, this can be whatever you want it to be. And you can see it will contract or expand depending on what text you put in here. So choose whatever you want. Try to make it as descriptive as possible because one thing you want to consider is the reason we create dashboards is so that we can cut significantly cut back on the number of emails that are going out, the number of status updates that people are asking for. So when some executive or a stakeholder comes to your dashboard, you want them to be able to understand what's the data telling them. And so if you can put the right text in the right place, it can go a long way because then people can look at it and go, oh, okay, I know exactly what this is referring to. So just pick whatever makes sense to you. Obviously, I'm not very creative and I'm sticking to just these really, really non-descriptive tables or headings here, but do as I say, not as I do. The next option you have are ordering. So as you can see, my numbers right now are coming in 40, basically big to smallest. You can reverse that from zero or sorry, from small to big, or you can go um, alphabetical and it'll do it in alphabetical order. Now, this is another great thing that you can basically configure, do what makes sense for you and your team, but make sure you leverage this so that your data is not just scrambled and it actually is presented in a logical manner. Now, the next option you have is this show zero counts. Now, if you have any fields that are coming in that essentially don't have any values or data in them, as in, I don't have any issues that are done, 
instead of showing a zero and basically overloading this chart and basically making it a little bit more cluttered, now I gotta expand to show more. And it's just, it's kind of a, not a really pretty thing to look at. You can deselect it, which is by default off, and basically clean up this chart. So it's only gonna show you the information that's actually bringing data back. Now this next section, I really, really like. So each of these segments, there's a couple things that I wanna show you that you can do. One, you can change the color. Some executives are scared whenever they see red. So if you don't wanna throw off any flags, use the red only when appropriate. So for any other time, change the color. For example, maybe if I had a blocked status or, or on hold, I would paint those red so that I can very quickly go, okay, these are my pain points and I gotta go get those addressed. But in this case, I'm gonna try to eliminate red wherever possible just so that my executives don't get freaked out. Okay, so a little pro tip there for you. The other thing that you can do is uh, the status is here. They're automatically the names that are coming in from Jira, right? So if you have specific statuses that are managed by your Jira administrator, that's fine. But if you wanted to have a different name, maybe your executives don't want to see um, backlog. They just want to see, I don't know, remaining work, right? This is a little bit more descriptive. We can rename it to remaining work and you'll see that it'll change the remaining work. Now, another cool thing that we can do is we can essentially create a two-way street here where I can just group all my remaining work together. So that's pretty much gonna be everything that, that is not done. So instead of having all these different statuses, I can actually click on this little plus sign here to where it says add option. And all I need to do is find the other fields that are used. And uh, custom charts here is gonna help me. It's gonna tell me this is a used option. And so I can click on these and essentially start building this out so that all these other fields that are going to constitute my remaining work are all grouped together, as you can see here. So once you have them all in there, I essentially have pretty much all my work. I have somehow I missed to do, but let me add to do real quick. All right, so I have all my work in here and now that's my remaining work. Now I don't have done because I didn't have any issues done, but for this case, I'll turn back on the zero, but you can see that it says done. Maybe done is not the right word. I can click on the pencil here and put completed work, right? And now when my executives come and look at this, they will be able to see, okay, very clearly, here's my completed work. This percentage is hopefully gonna be changing. And then the remaining work, you can see what's actually still outstanding. So this is a great way to take the just the out of the box. Maybe you don't have some certain control over what field your team uses, but when you're telling the story, when you're using the gadgets, and the dashboards to tell the story of how your project is progressing, this is where you really have some creative freedom. And I really, really love that Custom Charts allows you to do this because the Jira sometimes is just constricted by my admins in such a way that I feel like I can't get value out of it. But by leveraging this functionality here, it's very, very clear to anybody reading this how much work is still remaining and how much is still completed. So very, very valuable here. Now, aside from that, uh, you can essentially change things around. You can add more segments. You can hide things. So if you didn't want to show them, you can completely hide them here. So this is just optional to you. Now, we do have a legend section here where you can show your legend. You can manipulate a couple of things and you can kind of change the statuses here. So if you don't want to show the percentages, all you got to do is hide the column and it'll hide the percentage. Sometimes uh, the percentages in custom charts this is a little misleading. I have spoken with the product owner and they have told me that they are working on basically bumping up the fidelity of their percentage. So stay tuned for that. But for right now, it's a little bit misleading because the percentage is working off the whole total. And sometimes it's kind of not the right percent that you want to show. You can also add additional columns. So if you wanted to do a count on maybe not the issues, but uh, I don't know, the story points, you can do that as well. I'm not sure if I have story points in here. I, apparently I did. And so you can see that now my story points will also show up. And here too, you can hide those percentages. So if it just doesn't make sense for you to show percentages, you can turn those off um, as well, right? And so you have a couple of options here. You can show the number in the column. You can hide it, it's up to you. You can also show the total row. And so you can kind of see how you can manipulate stuff here to essentially help you tell whatever story it is you're trying to tell. 
So that's that there. We now have the chart descriptions. So you can add a description again. If, if somebody's not watching this summary of all work from technical team, you can save this so that anybody again looking at this can go, okay, I know exactly what this chart is trying to tell me and how I can leverage it. And the last thing that I'll talk about here is the chart options. So you do have another of options here. So we can change instead of count label to be issues, you can change it to be whatever you want it to be. This display on hover, it'll show you the count and the percent or just a percent or just the count. And what that means is that when I hover over certain areas on the chart, it'll essentially be showing me uh, data. So as you can see here, it'll show me the number and the percent, or I can show it to just be the count, or I can just show it to be just the percent. So it really just depends on what you want and, and how you again want to present it. So those are pretty much it. The last thing I'll talk about is this uh, decimal places. So your percentage, if you want to make it at 2% or however many decimals you want, this is going to help you out so that you're, that you can format your numbers correctly so that they show up correctly. Cause again, the last thing you want to do is create confusion. You want to essentially make sure that whoever's looking at your charts has the information that they want. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Those are just some of the configuration settings that you can do that are super valuable to help you get the most out of this custom charts for Jira plugin. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Drop a like if you got value out of this video. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thanks again to All Street Solutions. And I'll see you in the next one.